Get, get, get. Yeah! Lay it all on tonight's game or kiss it goodbye. I lost all my money and I was crying and shit. That's how you lose $100,000. Oh, hold it. Hold it. Hey, tonight. <laughs> this addiction is the most crippling thing that can happen to a person. It not only steals your money, it steals your time. It steals your soul, man. It's so fucking fucked up. Gambling. The other day, my brother told me about Twitch streamers who are being paid millions of dollars to go and stream online gambling. And I immediately wondered where was this money coming from? And what was this bizarre phenomenon that was happening? I mean, companies don't just give that kind of money away for nothing. So what were they getting out of it? Well, researching this one question led me down a whole rabbit hole about the larger world of online gambling and how far it reaches and more so how normalized it's become in the past few years beyond even these Twitch streams, which is why why I made this video essay on the toxic normalization of online gambling. By the way, if you don't know me, I'm Kara. I'm a personal finance and media literacy enthusiast. I love talking about the ways that we can build wealth, but also the way that we interact with society. And I think this topic of online gambling captures the intersection of all of that really well. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. So one of the first reactions I am sure I'm going to get to this whole thing is why do I care? People can do as they please. Consumers have free will. And to that I say, do we actually have free will or do we just have the illusion of free will perpetuated by marketing teams who are feeding off our monkey brains. I kind of think it's the latter. Whatever side you land on in this debate over consumer free will, one thing you need to admit is that it is odd in the United States that we have so many rules about limiting advertising on things like alcohol and tobacco, but not on things like sports betting. All of them are addictive, all of them have the potential to ruin people's lives, so why don't we crack down as hard on all of them? Especially as we see more and more people getting affected by this nowadays, with the National Problem Gambling Helpline Network receiving 45% more calls last year than it did the year prior. There has never been a time in history where gambling was more primed to spread than it is now. And make no mistake, we as young people are the targets of these online gambling companies. Think about it, if they can get to us early, they have decades and decades of us to be able to fork over money to them, even if it's at the detriment of our financial, mental, and physical well-being. And even if you don't gamble, the psychological tricks that gambling utilizes are the same ones social media is using to keep you trapped keep you hooked, but more on that later. With all that, let's dive in. So if you're a boomer trapped in a young person's body like me, then you might not be an avid Twitch viewer, but here's the deal. Twitch is a live streaming website where people can live stream themselves playing video games or doing crafts or all these things and build up an audience and interact with fans. And some of these popular Twitch streamers are being paid millions of dollars in sponsorships with online gambling companies to stream themselves playing online gambling games. This has led to some controversy because the majority of Twitch's audience is quite young, they're impressionable, and arguably show Showing them hours and hours of gambling content isn't the best for their growing minds and might get them into gambling at a very young age. And before I get any further into this video, I want to make my stance crystal clear that I think gambling is an objectively and statistically negative thing for individuals and for society. Yes, we can go back to the consumer free will argument and say that people should be able to gamble if they want to. What's the problem, annoying lady on the internet? Well, the problem is that gambling isn't something that you can always just walk away from from. If you become addicted, it can be devastating. And research shows that the earlier you're exposed to gambling, the more likely you're going to become a problem gambler in adulthood or even earlier. Many gambling disorders start in adolescence, and this number blew me away, but one out of 25 teens have a gambling problem. This is an issue for several reasons, including that problem gamblers have the highest suicide rates among addicts. The average debt of gambling addicts ranges from 15,000 for female gamblers and 55 to 90,000 dollars for male gamblers. Gambling companies are a business, a business that preys on addiction and makes billions of dollars because you as the gambler are always set up to lose. And I know stats can be boring, but I think it's important to illustrate how very destructive gambling can be, especially for young people, which sadly is probably why these online gambling companies are targeting Twitch streamers and celebrities like Drake. Eddie, what did I tell you? It's my night tonight. 
<laughs> oh yeah, Drake is in on this crap too. But back to Twitch's online gambling streams, which I think is one of the best representations for how online gambling is trying to position itself right now as digital entertainment. And watching these streams, it feels super dystopian. Like this one with Aiden Ross, a 21 year old Twitch streamer who gets paid a, reportedly $1 million a week to stream this online gambling stuff by State Casino, who is also the sponsor of Drake and many other streamers. Like something about the dealer's suit and mask, the gold, the comments in the corner, it's giving major Squid Game vibes, which fits because the main character in Squid Games was a gambling addict. So, you know, maybe that's what the aim of this all is for, is just getting a lot of people in debt so that they're forced to play a game of life or death. Is that a joke or is that just a metaphor? You decide. But what's crazy to me is how distorted a view of reality these gambling streams create. At one point, Aiden Ross is down like a million dollars. A million dollars? You could live off of that the rest of your life? It makes it so the wins and the losses, they don't feel real. You forget that it's even money in the first place. That makes the wins look enormous too. Here he wins $126,000 in one round. That is multiple amounts of the average salary in the US. At this point, it's just like tokens in a game that feeds into this idea of like gambling is just entertainment. It's not real money. And that is a dangerous dissociation to create. And adding to this idea that these numbers aren't anchored in reality, we have to remember Aiden Ross is being paid $1 million a week for this stuff. And conspiracy theory hat here, is he getting subsidized to lose and win a little bit? Like, is he being given play money by these online gambling companies to make the wins and losses seem huge because that's more entertaining for viewers? And just so that I'm not picking on Aiden or Twitch streamers only, like I said, Drake is doing the exact same thing. It's a misrepresentation of reality where the likes of $17 million can just be tossed around and highlight videos afterwards don't show the losses. Like according to the comment on the video, Drake lost most of that money during that same stream. That level of misrepresentation distorts the very realities and dangers of gambling where money is real money. It's money out of your bank account. It is money that could have financed your future and your security and your family and your food and rent and all of these things, you forget that because it feels like a game. It feels like digital entertainment. And these are just tokens to play the game, but that's not true. And all those losses you're likely to have if you follow the footsteps of your favorite streamers and you do this online gambling. Well, according to Hasana B, those streamers might be making bank every single time you lose. A lot of these websites, Stake and all of them, if they have a code, if you are offering a code, that means that Stake is tracking all of your losses and you're getting a percentage of your fan base's losses. They let you in on it, dude. They let you in on the, on the losses of your fan base. Through these online gambling partnerships, influencers are profiting off of the addictions of their fan base, very well possibly being the reason those fans got an addiction in the first place. Let me be even clearer with this. If this is true, influencers and celebrities like Drake are monetizing off of the financial and mental suffering of the people who look up to them. It is exploitative and a total abuse of one's position. And unfortunately, the problem doesn't stop there. Editing Kara jumping in here to say that weirdly enough, I've been editing this video this week and then the new news came out that Twitch has officially banned gambling content and gambling streams from their website. I think this is awesome news. Hopefully more companies push against this trend of online gambling. Just wanted to give you guys that update and back to the video. Gambling has always been around, that's not new, but what is new is the extreme proximity and easy access we have to gambling on a daily basis. Mix in there some mass media, some tribalism, and a new Supreme Court ruling, and you have the perfect recipe for an American epidemic in the form of sports betting. What is sports betting? Now, get a risk-free... You need to have five to seven sports books. Taking over the younger generation. Gold rush for gaming operators and also bettors. Exactly what it sounds like betting on sports. But we are not talking about betting your friend $5 that Duke is going to beat UNC this year while you're sitting at Applebee's. No. This is a multi-billion dollar industry that has slithered its way into the public psyche through lobbyists and hundreds of millions of dollars worth of sponsorships and commercials. Turn on ESPN and you'll see it. It's just ad after ad of these sports betting companies like DraftKings and FanDuel. Well, FanDuel, the ball's in your court. Hit cash out and tell that voice in your head to hey, be quiet. Nothing like a commercial telling you to silence the voice of reason in your head to make you think, huh, this is a great place to park my money. And ESPN is not stopping with just commercials. They have a whole roster of sports betting dedicated shows now. I mean, look at their YouTube channel. 
videos posted every few hours. Hey, but at least in one of those videos, they mentioned how you don't need to be betting on every single game. College basketball being back was, hey, cool. There's something I can bet on nightly and maybe win. Nope, no, you, no, you cannot. I mean, good for them for pausing feeding people's addictions for a second to give them some real advice. Just because it's on TV doesn't mean you have to bet. By rule, maybe kind of a, it kind of does. Nope. Never mind. And just like with the Twitch streams of online gambling, sports betting is targeting a uniquely young audience. The faces of these companies are celebrities that young people know, and the medium is apps on your phone. It's a frictionless experience native to young people who grew up with mobile game apps that are eerily similar to the sounds and bright colors and gamification of these sports betting apps. I will say it makes sense why sports teams and companies like ESPN are embracing sports betting with open arms. It's not only a matter of the millions of dollars of commercial money that they're getting, but also it engages the sports fans in a whole new way. If you're sports betting, you're more likely to watch till the end of the game because you're not just betting on the whole game, but you're betting on little things in between. Or you might be willing to watch teams or sports that you wouldn't have ever watched before. All of that then translates to more money that the sports teams and media companies can then make. And you know who else makes money from this arrangement? The government, of course they do. I will say that it's an argued positive that states who legalize sports betting can now bring in some extra tax revenue from sports betting being in their state. Legal Sports Report breaks down the tax revenue by state since 2018, the year when the Supreme Court struck down a ban on sports betting outside of Nevada, which gave states the right to allow sports betting on a state by state basis. By the way, that is probably why you have noticed such an influx in sports betting advertisements these past few years where as before you would have never seen these ads, it's all because of that Supreme Court ruling. Anyways, in total, the chart calculates that states have brought in a total of $1.66 billion since the Supreme Court ruling in 2018. And at first you think, wow, that's amazing. Over $1.6 billion. I mean, that could help us pay for schools and roads and infrastructure that we need. And that would be true if it was the whole story. But like most things in life, it's a little more complicated than that. As this Baylor University paper called The Hidden Social Cost of Gambling points out, quote, gambling industry representatives are fond of advertising the amount of taxes that their proposed casino or gambling project will pay. They treat this as a social benefit and typically calculate their numbers from projected revenues. Never or almost never do they project the lost taxes that public coffers will experience when demand dollars are shifted away from other businesses. So where someone may have been spending their extra cash on eating out or more shopping, it's possible now that they're putting that money instead into sports betting apps. But this is just one of the many hidden social costs that author Earl L. Grinoles points out in their paper. He breaks down the costs into nine categories, crime costs, business and employment costs, bankruptcy, suicide, illness related to pathological gambling, social service costs, direct regulatory costs, family costs, and abused dollars. Just imagine if someone loses their job because of their problem gambling and now they have to file for unemployment, which is taking money directly from the government's wallet, which is also eating away into the tax revenue that they made from sports betting or gambling as a whole. And that's not even beginning to quantify the pain and suffering that gamblers and their loved ones and their community at large end up facing because of gambling. That's something I'll talk about soon in the human cost section of this video. To me, it's hard to quantify if legalizing sports betting is an actual win for states when you account for all the hidden costs. But as the National Conference of State Legislators says, quote, states looking to close budget gaps with sports betting revenue may be disappointed, especially as more and more states legalize and take their slice of the market. Look, I'm by no means a policy expert, but I would like to ask state legislators if they think that the tax revenue that they're going to get is really worth the potential wave of gambling addictions that many fear are going to come with the rise of sports betting. Not that it's going to stop gambling company lobbyists who are hard at work trying to get more states to legalize sports betting, and it probably also won't stop any sports teams or athletes or companies like ESPN from promoting sports betting because why would they? You know, they're making money. So who cares if you exploit your fan bases like you did with the Twitch streaming stuff too? It's all just about money, guys. Because I mean, this stuff isn't actually impacting people negatively, right? Right? 
Gambling is a public health issue, and I think what we're seeing with the rise and normalization of online gambling is the potential for a public health epidemic. There are financial effects, of course, but there's also mental ones, psychological, emotional ones for the gambler, but also the loved ones in their life and their community. While researching for this video, I came across a couple of really powerful stories, people sharing their gambling experience and their gambling addiction, and it was really incredible to hear about, and, and one of the underlying things that kept coming up was was this feeling of not feeling like yourself anymore, feeling like you had transformed into someone else entirely that you didn't recognize and that you were trapped chasing losses. One story I came across was this woman who had been battling a gambling addiction for years now and it had affected so many aspects of her life. She even talks about how she had gotten into med school and was going to go, but then she couldn't because she gambled away her tuition multiple times. Her story is really compelling. I shared the link in the down bar below. It's half an hour long, so I'm not gonna put all of it here, but but I've added a few clips that I thought were really compelling. I would long to come home to my phone when everybody goes to sleep, to be in the couch in darkness and play for hours, losing so much money each time. It's taken me 10 years, 10 years of lies, of pain, of anxiety. I've lost relationships, I've lost of everything. Another story I came across was this man recounting his experience with his on and off gambling addiction. I had $60,000 of savings. All of it is gone. This is where I should be at my absolute prime financially. And gambling has completely destroyed that prospect. The addiction of gambling is a destroyer in so many ways. We all have these demons and they come in different shapes, sizes and forms. Mine came in the shape of a machine with bright colors and sounds. That was it. That was all I needed to fuck up. These are just two stories in a whole sea of other stories out there. There are so many other people struggling with gambling. You see it there in the pain in their voices that it is hard and it is devastating. It just makes it all that more concerning that online gambling is becoming so much more normalized and accessible and targeted towards young people. Now, some good news is that Ramio from the second story, he actually posted on his YouTube channel a few months ago, a three month clean of gambling update. Um, and one thing that he mentions that I thought was really interesting was how replaceable he felt whenever he was quitting the gambling company. When I told them I'm leaving, do you think they tried to fight for me to come back? Do you think they appreciated that I wasted my life's worth of savings on this website, on this scam? They couldn't give two craps. You know why? Because I was so replaceable. You know how many uh, mi millions of more gambling addicts there are around the world? You think my $70,000 means anything to them? I thought it was interesting because I feel like these online gambling companies know that there are just so many people who are being funneled into this pipeline of gambling every single day so that they don't care that you who has no money left because you've wasted it all on us is leaving because we have more people to bleed dry. Either way, as of that update video, Ramio has gotten out. What is so fascinating to me about online gambling and the reason I've spent so long now talking about it is that it lives in this very unique intersection of exploitation and greed and the globalized addictive nature of modern technology. In a poetic way, it feels like it's this metaphor for the way that we interact with the internet as a whole. Addictive, sucking us in, and keeping us in a state of spiraling and dopamine chasing. Both stories before at some point in their videos mentioned something about the gamification of gambling, the bright sounds, the colors, the way that it engaged you and basically tap into your monkey brain. Things that you would typically find in a game like Candy Crush and not something that you'd think would have the potential to link to your bank account and wipe out all of your life savings. But we see this gamification and things beyond gambling, things that we interact with on a daily basis, specifically social media. Things like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, all of it. If you are like me, you've probably had an experience where you're on one of those apps or more of those apps and hours go by, you're in the same position and you're like, where did the time go? It traps you in and it hooks you with something called the slot machine effect, where you're constantly scrolling, waiting for 
for something new, something that'll give you that little bit of dopamine. Maybe it's a really interesting video or an interesting update on Facebook and they add in all this other fluff. So you're always chasing, you're always scrolling. The University of Michigan has an article that's title summarizes it perfectly. Social media, coffees, gambling methods, quote, to create psychological cravings. And as The Atlantic puts it in their article, America's gambling addiction is metastasizing. Quote, gambling relies on addiction for its business model to function. Everybody knows that. But addiction is also the business model for a huge chunk of Silicon Valley. We are constantly interacting with companies that want us to be addicts, that want to keep us hooked. And so far, they're succeeding. I think we as a culture are more primed for gambling addictions than ever before because on a daily basis, we are rewiring our brains to be more like addicts. We are dopamine chasing. We are looking for immediate gratification. We're doing all of these things and pair that with this toxic normalization of online gambling through things things like sports betting, through things like Twitch streams, all of these apps that you have. What I worry about is it leading to a situation where a lot of people are going down a path that is really devastating for them and devastating for their futures and their loved ones and their community. First off, if you are experiencing any gambling issues or gambling addiction, I've linked some resources in the description box, including the National Gambling Helpline, so please go and check those out. Second, if you got to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. This video took a long time to research and write, um, but it was so fascinating. It really did take me down this whole rabbit hole of stuff that I didn't know was going on. I don't really watch sports, but I'd seen a few ads, and then I don't watch Twitch, but my brother had told me about some of the Twitch streams going on. And it just felt like unearthing this whole world I didn't I didn't know about, but hopefully it was interesting for you guys as it was interesting for me. And I hope also it this didn't come across as just like doom, 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 because I don't think it's inevitable that we all end up gambling addicts by any means. And hopefully this video acts as a way to make people aware that this is happening so that they can look out for themselves and for the people around them. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to this channel. I'm planning to do some more video essays soon on that intersection between you know, personal finance and media literacy and society, all of that stuff. So I want to cover topics like MLMs, stay-at-home girlfriend trend, buy now, pay later trends, like all these different things. I think there's so many interesting things to talk about right now. So I'm very excited to make some videos on that. I probably will also make some just general personal finance education stuff. But if you have any ideas for topics you'd like me to cover, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear what you'd like me to talk about. Also, if you would like to donate to this channel, you can quote buy me a cup of coffee that's in the description bar below and I also recently opened an Etsy store I right now have just a budget and spending tracker the one that I personally use on there so that's available down there I'll probably add more stuff there too so go and check it out all right thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon